Hey everyone, in this video I'm sharing with you 5 things I wish I knew when I started with N8N. So let's start. The first one is the ability to pin and edit any output from any module that you want and save it for later or edit it for testing purposes. For this I prepared a sample workflow that we'll be using. It has the form trigger and the edit fields node. So let's run it and then submit okay as you can see here it has successfully executed so here we can see the output of this edit field node here as well as the output of this uh, form here now if you want to add any other node so let's say i want to add this one here let's look for html let's create a template or html template from this so generate html template here we will see the output of the uh, fields right if i delete this save it and then refresh the page if I want to add another node, for example, HTML again, the same thing, I don't see the output here. So every time I add, I will have to re-execute the previous nodes. Same goes for the other nodes if you want to add them here. This can be solved easily by, let me show you. Let's re-execute once, submit, and then we can go here to the left node, check the output. And then in the top right corner, we can see this pin icon here. So let's click on it. We, that way we will pin the output of this node. So next time, if I refresh, let's save. Let's look for the HTML model again. Generate HTML template. As you can see here, I still have the previous output from the previous execution. That way I can always take it and then drag it and drop it here. All right. So that way we have solved this problem of re-executing each time. We have it pinned. We can always go back here, go to the output. We have the pinned output always saved there. No matter how many times I save and then I refresh the page. All right. Now the other thing is that we can also, other than pinning the output, we can change it to wherever depending on our test case. So again, top right corner, click on this pen icon and then we can change the output. So let's change it to mock one mock type for example and let's save it okay save again let's refresh now the output will be always mock one and mock type this is always useful when testing out a new node or adding a new node so that way you don't have to rerun your whole workflow again just pin one output and then you can edit it to whatever you want so this has been the first point now moving on to the second point which is when working with ai agents we all know that we can add tools to our ai agent to give it extra capability so for this i created this workflow the quote generator i created an ai agent that is supposed to generate a motivational quote and then create a html uh, file out of it or format i will show you later how but then when i try to add another tool so let's click here it only gives me a limited list of tools or uh, things that i can use let's say for example i want to add a, a tool that is not available in the tool list but is available as a node in n8n for example in the tools we can find html our ai agent doesn't have a html tool to generate an html template and execute it at the same time but in the list of of nodes here we have an html node as you can see here and it can generate html template and the solution for this is simple there is a feature on n8n that we can give to our ai agent it is called call n8n workflow tool this one will make our ai agent able to call in any other n8n workflow we have created so let's type it here let's leave it for now i have created another workflow here uh, called generate html which uses the node that we want to add to our ai agent but we couldn't find in the tool notes for this you will have to uh, include the trigger called when executed by another workflow so basically right click click on add node look for workflow you will find execute sub workflow and then you'll find the trigger when executed by another workflow just include it there and then you will have to add your html node or whatever other node you want to use for my case i use html so we go here we create it and then we go back to the trigger here we have to specify the data that is going to be sent to this workflow for my case i sent only uh, a message with the type string so the message will take in the quote that uh, the ai agent is going to generate and then include it in the html template that i'm gonna create which is a simple html file called quote of the day and then it will display the quote here so let's save it go back to the previous workflow we have the ai agent go back to the tool call n8n workflow tool here you can give it a name generate html for example give it a description and then the source keep it to database and workflow select from list 
and then go to the workflow you have created for this case so for my case it is generate html for the workflow inputs here for my case i will let the ai agent decide what to send exactly so go here click on this icon and then leave it let's save it and now let's test it let's go to open chat tell it generate you can see that it started by generating the quote. Okay, it gave us the quote. And now it's generating the HTML file. So it used the tool here. And then it gave us the final answer. So if we go here and click on this, we will see the HTML file here. It gave us the quote. Oh yeah. Now the third thing that I want to talk about is error handling. Sometimes you have set up a workflow for your client or you have multiple accounts that are running and it end for multiple clients. And you want to have a specific error handling workflow that lets you know when an error happens before your clients figure out. So for this, and it end has a trigger called error trigger that you can use by right click on any workflow go and add node and then looking for error here choosing the error trigger you will get the node here and then you can link it to whatever node you want for example if you want to send yourself an email via gmail a phone sms or a slack message or something that you're active on to get always notified when an error happens so this one we call the error handling workflows we can go here so let's say for example i have created this uh, workflow i named it error for example it is a simple http request that i have put a random the url that i know for sure doesn't exist and is gonna cause me error let's try to run it for example it gives invalid url of course the url doesn't exist and now we want to link this workflow to the previous error handling workflow so whenever an error happens here we get notified on our email for this you will have to go to the top right corner of your workflow click on the three dots here and then choose settings and then for the error workflow you will have to choose the name of the error handling workflow that you have created for my case it is called error handling so choose from this drop down list here and then choose error handling of course and then after that you will hit save and whenever an error happens here you will get directly notified on your gmail account via this error handling workflow using the error trigger that we have created here Moving on to the fourth thing that we'll be talking about, which is rate limiting. Of course, sometimes it happens that you are using, for example, in this workflow, I'm using Appify to scrape posts from Twitter or X. To scrape any website easily, you can use Appify. You will find the link in the description for it. And yeah, after that, I'm scraping these posts from Twitter. And then I'm trying to feed my Google Sheets with the most relevant posts to me, of course. So for example, let's say Appify here will return a whole list of posts. So I'm exaggerating rate in here but let's say 5000 posts i'm trying to filter them and then include only let's say 500 or whatever posts that are relevant to my case in my google sheets using this google sheet node here sometimes you can get rate limited uh, because you're sending in too many requests to the google sheet and then google will tell you hey stop you're sending too much requests so it will cause you an error and then make your workflow fail so to prevent this error here we are going to use a rate limiting method using this wait node so we include a wait node here let's remove this link and then instead of directly taking the output here and then feeding the google sheets with the output we use the wait node as an intermediate node between these two so let's link them here and then in the wait node here we can set the wait amount so let's say one second for example we can put it one minute, which will be an overkill, of course. We're using only uh, one second between each ad. So that way we don't get blocked by the rate limit and of the Google Sheets node or any other node to be exact. So yeah, this is how you solve rate limiting. This is one workaround that we can use. Now moving on to the last thing that we are going to talk about, which is the ability in N8N to have multiple triggers in one workflow. And all of these triggers can do the same thing in a single workflow. So for this case, we have two triggers triggers which are on form submission triggers so let's say in your website for example you have a different forms that you can use and both of them are in a separate form or whatever so let's say you want to include the forms here from n8m one form is for users and one form is for admins in my case for example i have set two types admin and super admin and username for the admins and guest member and a username for the user form and then i want to take the input from whichever form gets filled and then put them in an 
an edit field here. You can do whatever you want with it after, of course, you can save it into a database or whatever. For the simplicity sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the edit field here to capture the node. So we have two uh, fields that are common, just the uh, values are going to be different. So we have username and type. One has guest and member and one has a super admin and owner as a type. So here we create two fields, one username and one type, and then we take both and map them here so let's execute one just map here and map the type there and it'll be good to go so now if we refresh let's say start this workflow this form will trigger the workflow that we have created for the user form so user one for example it will be a member let's submit we have triggered our workflow as well as this form will also trigger the workflow if we use it so let's see if we got the values correct here so user one a member and then here, if you want to test the workflow using this form, try to trigger it. It will also trigger the workflow. So add one, for example, and then super admin. And then, of course, we have executed the workflow again from this form. So and it and gives you the ability to trigger or use multiple triggers in one workflow. This can be useful in complex other cases. One of them is different forms in a website or whatever. So yeah, this has been the five things that I wanted to share with you guys. There are still multiple other things that I can do a part two if you want. Just leave me in the comments whether you want me to do that or no. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed and found this useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll be seeing you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.